So I'm here with uh, Lindsay and uh, he's got a cool new project that we're going to chat about. Can you uh, introduce yourself first, Lindsay? Yeah, um, my name's Lindsay Simon. I'm a web developer at the user experience department at Google and I've been here about a year and a month. Cool. So uh, what is this project that you're releasing? This is, so early on I was started working on a project where we were removing tables from uh, some of the markup and we were using uh, divs essentially and one of the first things that came up is Google tries very hard to internationalize everything that they do to work in you know, as many languages as possible and that includes languages which display in right to left mode so the body attribute on an HTML page will take RTL as an argument in which case the viewport switches how it views things. Now CSS doesn't immediately just get converted by the browser so when you go into right to left mode things that are float left are still float left so this is a problem for things that use CSS for layout and this project was built as a way to create a secondary style sheet that's exactly like the first but which will work as an alternate style sheet for right to left mode cool so is it like a generator like you feed it CSS and it spits out another one or? yep it works a variety of ways it's a it takes standard input so you can give it just a rule and it will convert that rule and give you standard output or you can feed it an entire CSS file a collection of CSS files and it will just give you the output of all of that so when you first uh, think about this I bet it's uh, naively you could be like oh yeah you just flip some lefts and rights and that then was, you're done oh yeah oh yeah that was, here we are six months later right it wasn't that easy um, thinking about how to do this was you know, at first I did, I built a little library of regular expressions that seemed like good ones and, you know, gradually we started writing more complicated unit tests and it just started falling apart. And um, so fortunately this project gets to benefit by some work by another Google developer named Mike Samuel, who also has some code that he's released. And uh, he had worked on a, just converting the CSS lexical language into Python regular expressions. So uh. it's, it's, you know, you can more or less copy it, but you do have to make some changes. So he had already built up this library of, you know, CSS2, I believe, done in regular expressions in Python. And so uh, grabbing that out of another project he used and making it independent, I managed, so now I'm using that part of this, uh, of his work, which is included in this release as cssLex.py. And so, so now the script uses this you know, copy of the regular expressions that are the lexical language structure in order to correctly parse things in the file. So it's a much more robust parser and that made all the unit tests start to work a lot more often. So what are some of the, the hard engineering parts to, to get right with this? Well, because it's still, you know, it's not a, it doesn't fully parse and, and, and create objects out of every CSS piece. It's still somewhat of a regular expression parser. The harder things were, uh, place times where you don't want to change one rule, say, or things within a class. Because actually sometimes, like in an input, when you write direction colon LTR, almost, you almost only do that when you're trying to solve an issue around bidirectional text formatting in the browser. So usually when you put that, you don't mean to have direction changed to RTL in the CSS. You mean for it to be LTR in both cases. So we had to add a, you know, a, a sort of an annotation that can be done in CSS commenting to say, hey, don't flip the following bit. And that was a little bit challenging. Um, other pieces were things that, you know, didn't f immediately fit the, oh, you know, what are all the things that should change? Well, there's, you know, anything with left is pretty obvious, but, you know, immediately, oh, padding. Padding needs to swap the second and fourth arguments when there's four in a shorthand string. Uh, but that was pretty obvious. Others were the cursor position, northeast, east, those need to become <laughs> west, northwest, so that was kind of fun because that's not, that wasn't immediately obvious. Um, there's a couple others too that, that still need some consideration. One is with audio CSS and this is something that uh, Eric Meyer thought of. He said, oh, what about uh, you know, for audio oral CSS there's an azimuth property and it's not quite so trivial as to just flip something you actually need to do a little bit of you know degree analysis so wow. I plan to talk to TV Raman about the utility of that before implementing it but that was one other thing so 
hopefully this will save people some time who are converting their layouts to right to left and they won't have to write this script again. Right, so uh, I'm a developer, I've got something, I've got this need uh, to, to flip this. Is this the kind of thing like you run once and then you kind of go to town? Yeah, I think this is something you integrate into your build. Okay. I think you say, okay, I've got a product, I've got a translation of this product into a right to left language like Hebrew, and when we serve the Hebrew version of the site, we should also serve this secondary CSS file. So when you deploy or build your application, it'll you know put all your CSS together in theory into a single file or individual ones and over each of those or over the final one you'd run this utility and create a second CSS file and that would be the one you serve to them. Okay great, can you uh, show us how it all works? Yeah, let's dig in. So we're gonna have a look at CSS Janus and this is a web app version of it which is included in the source code which I have running on my server and in the text area here I've pasted some interesting CSS this is one of the stranger cases of left to right to left issues where we want to change the body's direction um, property and value we want to change we don't want to change the input because the input has left to right set in order to deal with some bi-directional text issues. So we're going to go down, you can see there's a few options here for flags that can be done and I'll explain these in a second, but we'll go ahead and run CSS Janus real quick and we'll, what it should do is change the direction on the body and not change the direction on the input, which is what it's done. So this is kind of an interesting case of something that wasn't immediately obvious to me getting started with this project. Here I have some example CSS that's also pretty illustrative. So here I've put up a couple of left to right and left type tokens in the class name. And we never want to change these tokens in the class name because presumably you aren't changing them in the markup as well. We've got a padding, a margin right, a background position, a background URL, also with some of the tokens for left to right and such in the string, followed by a, a no flip annotation in front of a class name where we're floating left and one without the no flip. So let's run CSS Janus and look at the output, talk about it. So the class name didn't change. You'll notice that in the padding, the second and fourth values have been flipped margin right is now margin left background position when it has a percentage in the x coordinate will be changed it's much harder to do when you have pixels here and it's really not doable at present time from limitations of the CSS language in the background you'll notice it hasn't changed anything which is the default the correct default way of dealing with it now here we need an annotation so that you, if you have a class name where you don't want to flip things inside of it, you can do that. And so that's what you see here is that the first one, the float on foo, has not been changed, but the float on bar has been changed because it doesn't have the no flip annotation. So, kind of interesting. We'll, we can run with the two flags for CSS Janus turned on, and we should see that in the background the URL does in fact change which it has now, not on places where there's a word character boundary like bright and sleft, which we wouldn't want changed, but right, left is now right and LTR is now RTL. So if you do have mirroring images and you want to use that kind of approach for your CSS, then you can use the CSS Janus flags to flip those things in background URLs. Otherwise, you may not be wanting to do that. Alternately, the web app will take the URI to a CSS file and output the results on the right here or you can use the there's some code at the bottom in your markup itself you could use an import line passed to the web app and it will actually export you know get into your page the right to left version of the CSS so there's a variety of ways to use the web app that may be useful to you if you don't want to use build rules for instance so now let's look at another quick example of just how it works and how you might use it to test things. Here we've got CSS Janus checked out on the command line and I'm just going to quick look at the things in here. CSS Janus.py is the actual command. So we have 
a demo page that's done in left to right. And I'm going to show you that page here. It's just lorem ipsum text. And this is using CSS, sort of a grid layout approach to do the 25 75 percentage width on the columns. So just changing the body direction attribute alone won't flip this layout. So what we're going to do is if we look real quick at the demo ltr.css, oops, we can, oops, uh, if we look real quick at the demo ltr.css, you can see that the direction has ltr. I'm just going to make this a little more readable. You see the direction has ltr here. And as we go down the file, you can see our, our units in the CSS grid. Is you, it's using float in order to accomplish the layout. And so this is what we want CSS Janus to change. And also our p tag at the bottom has been given a padding. And we're going to want this fourth the you know padding on the left to end up as padding on the right when we flip this. So we're going to cat demo ltr.css to CSS Janus. And we're going to output that as demo rtl.css. So if we look at that real quick, you can see in fact the direction's been changed in the body. It's probably not super obvious that the, the, the floats have changed, but they've changed here. And then the padding, you can see that the fourth position is now the second. So I've made a demo page done in Hebrew that uses this RTL CSS, and you can see that it's correctly put padding in the, in the right place just to mirror how it had been done in the left to right version where padding is on the left in these units, padding is on now on the right in these units to in their pos correct position for the text. And the layout's been changed. So blue is on the right here, blue is on the left here. So that's just a quick demo of CSS Janus. It does you know, a few more things than that and I hope you take a look at it and if you're doing web pages that need right to left CSS, I hope it is useful to you.